Even my black, it just ends up covered in stuff. Hi, my name is Emma, this is Emma Raisin Books, and today I am casually at an office location and uh, just put a plant here. Yeah, do you like my, my casual my casual chair? We'll have a casual chat today. Um, today's video is my favourites, my casual favourites. I, I can sit up. No, this is, it's too comfortable to sit like this. Um, today, um, I am filming my favourites video, so this is my favourites for the month of September. Um, and when I film my favourites videos, I have certain categories that I, that I, you know, do the same categories every month. So those are linked below if you want to have a look at what the categories are. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to start. My first one is my favourite book. Now I, well, for a start, oh, I don't have a copy. How, like, man. Bad, bad indie author. The first book I've been enjoying this month is my new release that came out this month, which I'll put a picture here because I didn't bring the actual book. And that is Lily the Limpet Gets Lost. And I really enjoyed this book. <laughs> um, do check it out, it's in the, the links below. But because I was releasing that book, so it came out on the 12th of September, I was in a world of book creation hell. Um, the very late nights, any grabbed moment, kind of sorting out stuff, <laughs> sorting out stuff online, um, you know, sorting out um, uploading the file, or creating the files, and sorting, receiving the books, and checking the books, and, and, and creating marketing materials, and you know, stuff. I've just been really, really, really busy, and I've also been to a couple of events. So I haven't had that much reading time, but now, now that things have calmed down a little bit, uh, towards the end of the month, I've been like binge reading. Um, so up to this point, the only book that I've read is Charlie Heathcote's Indisputably Doris, which was very good, and I will be talking about it in my wrap up next week. But um, I, the, fate, the best book that I've read this month is the one that I'm currently reading. Well, actually, I'm currently reading about three, which is really unusual for me. Normally I am a, sorry about the traffic, I am a one book at a time kind of girl but um, it's because they're different formats so I've got an ebook and a paperback and an audiobook on the go and the audiobook I'm reading is I don't know why I like I, I'll show you Da Da Becoming by Michelle Obama um, and I, so I use the Overdrive app with my library and um, which incidentally you can get my book Milk on in ebook form <laughs> anyway um, the, uh, with Overdrive, I feel like I listen to all the audiobooks that I'm interested in and then I stop using it and I just listen to podcasts for ages and then I suddenly log back in and there's loads of new new audiobooks and so then I binge listen to loads of audiobooks and then I won't listen again. So it's been a few months since I last logged into it and then I went in the other day and I've um, downloaded a few audiobooks and um, started listening to this one right away because I've wanted to read it since it came out and it is so good. Again I'll review it on my wrap up but um, I'm about a third of the way in and um, I love Michelle Obama's writing style. I'd be really interested actually in how, you know how much because she's not a writer she's a lawyer but then obviously that involves writing but it's a different style. I'd be really interested in like what level of like editing, coaching, like whether she worked with a developmental editor and all that, I'd be really interested to know that because the writing is really beautiful um, and I found it very evocative of place because she talks about Chicago a lot and it's not a place I really know very much about and so her the way she talks about Chicago, uh, you know, I, I've talked about on here before, I really like learning and thinking about, so I've, I've really found that a major factor in why I enjoyed the book but also just learning more about her life she's such an interesting woman she's somebody that I have a lot of admiration and respect for so in terms of reading an autobiography you know she's somebody that I want to know more about and learning more about her and Barack Obama's background and yeah it's it I really really liked it I like the writer's style I also love the audiobook is read by her and she has a lovely voice and um you know it gives it a certain something to hear the author read a book I think um if they're good at doing it I have bits all over me. Um, so that's a good book. So my next category is place, a place that I've enjoyed going to. Well, I've, I've not really had like any days out, weekends out, anything like that to particularly, ow, talk about a, <laughs> my hair is stuck around my helix piercing. Ow. Right. Um, I've not really been anywhere to have 
much to talk about but where I have been is some of these uh, events that I've gone to. So I went to um, the breastfeeding festival in Milton Keynes which was absolutely brilliant and if you're interested in breastfeeding, in, in like learning more I'd recommend any of these kind of things because I go to a few of these like speaking events. So at this I had a stall um, when I was selling books, but sometimes I go as a, a like a, a delegate, um, and they is delegate the right word attendee anyway. They events like that where you have speakers are I just find them so um, just I I love listening learning from other people and learn, I I think. Although I'm a very visual learner, I do love listening to people talk, um, which is part of why I'm enjoying Michelle Obama's book. And I, so yeah, to be able to sort of meet people, network with people, put faces to names where like I've I've read their book. So I um, I've met Emma Pickett before, but I met her. I met Mad I've met Maddie McMahon, who I've talked to online, but to meet her in person was lovely. Um, I met Mars Lord very briefly, but she was lovely. Um, and uh, you know, just as I say, putting putting faces to names and and learning from them and learning from other stall holders as well as, as somebody who was holding a stall. So anyway, my point with that is going to whatever your your world is, whatever your whether it's like what you work in or what you volunteer in or you know, actually going to things and getting really inspired, that's what I'm gonna say is my favourite thing to do. Um, because I've really enjoyed doing that this month and the Milton Keynes Breastfeeding Festival was fantastic and shout out to everybody who organised it um, so if uh, if you live in the UK and I don't know if it will just be in Milton Keynes next year or if uh, it's been in the north before so whether there'll be a northern breastfeeding festival like Manchester or something like that I don't know but I would really recommend it and if you're not in the breastfeeding world equally other similar similar festivals I just think they're brilliant events so that's my recommendation like networking kind of stuff. Um, my favourite activity this month, maybe sounds lame, mind you one month I put cleaning as my activity, <laughs> my activity this month is sleeping because I have had so many late nights, so many stressful nights, um, like not sleeping as well, I've been under the weather, so sleep has been really important to me this month and that has been my favourite activity. Also, my uh, my two girls just aren't sleeping very well at the moment. So, and you know, a good night's sleep to me is absolute like joy and I've only had about two decent nights sleep this month. So my favourite activity, not that I've been able to indulge in it very much and maybe that's why it's my favourite activity, is to sleep. Um, my favourite channel, um, do you know, again because I've been busy, I haven't been really watching as much YouTube as I sometimes do, but my favourite channel this month, I think, is Lauren and the Books. Um, she's somebody that I watch pretty regularly, I watch most of the videos that she puts out. She's just got a lovely, bubbly personality, I believe I've shouted her out before because I do really enjoy her channel. Um, she's just a very positive person, she talks about books, she talks about feminism, she reads feminist books. Um, and like a lot of women's books, with like books by women, and um, not exclusively that, but um, but quite a lot of those, those kind of books. She um, she also does things like favourites videos. She talks about what she's enjoying. She talks about what she's into. She's made videos about fast fashion, and um, like she has a what she calls her alphabet series. So um, she does like a letter. So F was fast fashion. Um, and explores something. So I, I, don't, I just think the things that she does on her channel are really good. I'm really interested in the books she talks about. She has a lovely way about her. So um, if you're into bookish channels, which I guess if you're watching this, then you probably are, I'd really recommend Lauren and the Books as just a really lovely... By the way, on my YouTube channel, there's like some of my recommended channels on a panel down the side. So if you go on like my page, my YouTube, you know, you know, there's um, a list and she's on there. Um, but she's very, very good. Uh, my favourite food, I thought that I would give a little shout out here because um, at the Milton Keynes Breastfeeding Festival there were some amazing uh, independent food, like street food type people and um, I enjoyed some of their food. So I'd like to give a shout out first of all to the company Scone Quest. They were selling scones, they were the best scones and I mean I lived in Devon for three years and I can confirm that Scone Quest scones are, are excellent, the best scones. Um, unless you like a plain scone, which I, I do, but for kind of fancy scones, they were very good. The people were really lovely. Um, you can go check them out. I'll link them below if you live 
in the Buckinghamshire area, <laughs> then you may come across Scone Quest. They were really nice. Um, there was also St. Best Jamaican Cuisine. Again, I'll link them below. Um, they were from London and they'd come along and they were doing vegan Jamaican curry, which was amazing. And Jamaican patties, my God, I love Jamaican patties. I used to buy them at a little market stall in Luton when I lived around there. I actually said the tea in Luton. I'm getting posher. Luton. And... Uh, Man, they were so good, and, and uh, so I felt like I was like reliving my youth by buying Jamaican patties. Um, and there was another company, and I can't remember the name. So to add to that, although I didn't sample it, it looked amazing. So I had a massive migraine for the first day, and anyone who spoke to me, if I was making no sense, that's why. Um, there was a company which I believe was called Veg Heads, and um, they were selling vegan burgers that looked absolutely incredible. The guy was really nice. They were all really lovely. Um, and so, yeah, I didn't try their food, but I'm going to shout them out. And I would like to shout out the Fat Mallow Company, who I didn't eat any of their... I, I'm a vegetarian. Well, I'm a pescatarian, so I don't eat marshmallows. But if you eat marshmallows, she posts you marshmallows. And I'm going to be honest, like, I, I just look at her Instagram photos and remember when I used to eat marshmallows because my god they look good so all of those food they're all amazing I'll link them below they're really nice people and I was kind of quite near the food section and hung out with these people quite a lot and um, yeah they were really nice <laughs> and the food was amazing it smelled amazing and what I ate was delicious so um, shout out to those guys for food specific people like I said they're like obviously location specific except the Fat Mallow company she will post you marshmallows who doesn't want marshmallows well I don't want marshmallows in the post because I don't eat them but if, it, if the concept of marshmallows in the post is great. Um, and could someone please come up with a vegetarian marshmallow? Uh, TV. So, um, I would, I've, again, <laughs> again, I haven't watched that much TV, but what I did watch that I really, really enjoyed, two programmes I would love to, to recommend here. One is the Kathy Burke series, it's called All, All Woman. If it's not, I'll put below what it is. Um, I bloomin' love Kathy Burke. She, um, She's just hysterical. Um, she's great for like a quote. <laughs> um, one of the things I really enjoy is that my dad's side of the family are from London and her accent it, I find comforting, you know, in the way that you find like your, your the accent she grew up around. It's like, if, it just, it feels like home. So um, yeah, Kathy reminds me, uh, my family didn't swear as much as her. I mean, they swear, but not as much as her. Um, but she, she reminds me of like my dad's, um, my dad's side of the family, just like her accent is amazing. Anyway, aside from that, the content of the programmes is amazing. She, I've seen two so far. Um, I've watched the one about like uh, social media and I've watched the one, or beauty, sorry, it's about beauty, but she talks a lot about like the, uh, the impact of social media and the one about birth. And they were both amazing. I think she has such an interesting viewpoint. Um, and I love the way that she is to people. She's just, she just seems like the nicest person. So yeah, that was really good. And I'd also like to recommend uh, a, a documentary that is on the BBC. Um, I wanted to watch it for so long um, and it's called Seahorse and it was premiered at various film festivals. And uh, it's, it's based uh, near me, it's based in Deal. And uh, it's a story about a local uh, trans dad who, and about his journey. And it's just so thought provoking, kind of seeing like the process through his eyes. Um, here's a, a guy called Freddie McConnell. He's uh, on, on Instagram and all of that. And he, he well worth a follow. And the, the equally the film Instagram. Again, I'll, I'll put it all below. Um, but just to see that, I mean, obviously I'm ex interested in like birth and parenting and, and all of that stuff. So it, it very much, I mean, both of those programs kind of fall within that and, and feminism and, and equality and all of that. So both of those kind of tick those boxes for me. And also, I mean, Deal's an amazing place. I spent loads of time in Deal, but the footage they had, like drone footage of Deal, was just absolutely stunning. But um, very emotional program and and just sort of a real window, like without trying to be. I felt like it wasn't trying to be snazzy or anything <laughs> snazzy, but it was like just just literally just like opening a window. It was just like here you go. This is this is life it, it, which I think it's nice when a documentary is like that so you you kind of see it and draw your own conclusions if, if that makes sense um, and uh, yeah I just think it helped you 
to, to, to see behind closed doors and it's just such a beautiful story and just massive hats off to Freddie for producing, not producing, for being in such an amazing documentary and being willing to share his story and for all of the team behind that film I know that it's been really well received and I thought it was absolutely fantastic so if you haven't seen it and you're interested in the kind of those, those kind of worlds, same as me, like birth and equality and, and all of that then I'd really recommend those TV programs, they are fabulous. My next category is music and we go from serious to me. Well, I don't know, this is like a Marmite thing. Um, I'm having another Celine Dion phase. Now, hear me out, because <laughs> I know she's one of those people where it's like, oh, Celine Dion, really. Um, firstly, do remember that I am a child of the Titanic generation. I went to watch Titanic at the cinema. And so <laughs> there's that. Um, my dad used to really like Celine Dion and he had her Decade of Song album and um, we used to listen to it in the car. Um, when we used to go diving, so we'd drive across the desert, this is in Saudi Arabia, and we'd drive from Riyadh to Jed Jeddah and one of the albums that we would pretty much always play was Celine Dion, A Decade of Song. And uh, yeah, I mean, I. It's a guilty pleasure, I suppose. I really like her. I find I, I like to sing along. I like belting out her songs. So I go through phases. The reason that I've started another phase is because she's brought out another album, I believe, and so her um, her her stuff's popping up in my social media again. And watching interviews with her, I love interviews with her. Her personality is amazing. She's so funny, um, and I, I just got a lot of respect for the woman. I think, and and that's really what it boils down to. I like her as a person. I like her music, and although some of it's a bit kind of tacky, I suppose, and it's a bit like love songy, and it depends how you feel. But she really knows how to belt a power ballad, and there are there is a time and a place for a power ballad. My last uh, category is is a podcast, and I've been enjoying Desert Island Discs. So Desert Island Discs, if you're not from England, everything I've talked about is really like British specific, I'm sorry, apart from Sleep and Michelle Obama. Um, <laughs> but Desert Island Discs is a series put out by Radio 4 and what they do is they interview somebody and they ask them about their favourite records and they link those into the person's life story. And I like this series anyway. I generally listen to most of their podcasts. I don't listen to it live because it's not on a good, uh, a good time. Um, but uh, there is, you know, you can listen to it live. Um, but also when you listen to the podcast, they put on old episodes, one of which, um, so they're putting out old episodes at the moment, so I guess it's like the end of a series, um, was uh, Judith, well, they were saying it as Carr, in the, I thought it was Judith Kerr. Is it Carr? I have no idea, um, but it's spelled K-E-R-R. -R. Um, and she's the lady who wrote The Tiger Who Came to Tea, wrote and illustrated it. And... I mean, it's a famous kids' book, and I'd never really thought anything more about that. Um, but she was fascinating, and I really, really enjoyed learning more about her. And I think that's the thing I like about Desert Island Discs is that you get to learn about somebody. Um, and yeah, it just that was a really fantastic episode that I'd, I'd recommend. But any of the, the episodes, I sometimes go back and download old ones because I just enjoy. Them. <laughs> so yeah, I I've been enjoying that podcast at the moment. I would say that's my favourite. Then uh, the other nice thing about them is they're not super long. They're like half an hour, so they're quite um, you know lis listen toable. Um, and the fact that they're sort of interspersed music and people have really differing tastes. Some people are really into classical music. It's quite a lot of people who talk about classical music, but then you get other totally different kinds. So yes, Desert Islandists. I am going to recommend there is a good podcast so those are my favorites this month that's what i've been enjoying let me know whether you like or hate any of these things <laughs> don't, don't tell me you hate them <laughs> let me know if you like any of these things let me know what you've been enjoying please do comment below please like this video if you did and uh make sure to uh um, um subscribe <laughs> to catch more videos about reading about writing bookish things and i will see you all soon for my next one take care